All right. <laughs> Welcome back to TK and Drinks. This is the third time tonight. I don't know if anybody caught any of my other live videos. I didn't say anybody caught them. So we're just going to pretend like those didn't happen. Nobody saw them. We discarded those videos. And we're starting over fresh. So welcome to TK and Drinks Tuesday Night Live. We got a What's the Story interview going on tonight with Corey Mason from Tree Hive Meadery there in Illinois. This man I met at uh, Mazer Cup. Super cool dude, super chill. Uh, got along really well, so I just thought I'd you know give him an interview, get his some uh, get some exposure to my tens of fans that follow me occasionally. Uh, and just, you know, chop it up with a guy who's like-minded individual. It's always, it's always fun to, you know, steal sharp and steal type of thing. So that's what we're we'll doing tonight as soon as he uh, pops on over here. Um, so per my standard uh, TK and Drinks Tuesday Night Live type thing we got going on, uh, every Tuesday I do an interview and I drink a beer. This week we'll be drinking the Goldwater Brewing Company here out of Scottsdale, Arizona. They got the Hop Chowda and... Uh, yeah, oh, looks like here's Corey right here. Let's see if we can't pull this man in here. Somehow figure it out. There it is, add. The way that sounds, I like I like rhymes and alliteration because I'm a simple-minded individual. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so anyway, be drinking this hop chowder tonight. Hey, how's it going? Hey, what's going on, Corey? How you doing, man? Good, man. How are you? Doing very well. Thanks for popping in tonight. I appreciate the stop by. Oh, yeah. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yes, sir. So uh, I was just uh, doing my quick little Tuesday intro video thing. And every Tuesday when I do these videos, I try to drink a little beer or mead or something. And this week I'm drinking a Goldwater Brewing's hazy IPA called the Hop Chowda. Now, I don't know if you that can look somewhat familiar. Maybe you've seen it around in a condensed soup variety or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's nice. Somehow, some people get away with that. See, and that was, that's one of the things, it, that's a perfect thing we can start off with. You know, you see those types of things around in the mead world as well. You know, you get people biting on other people's logos, stealing people's artists and whatnot, you know. Uh, what did, some people just seem to get away get away with it. Other people get slammed for it. What What's the story with that? I, I don't know. I've always wondered, uh, even with names and everything like that, but, I mean, right. people, you know, some people like to toe the line. I'm not one of those people. I like to follow the rules. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, government officials listening. We follow all the rules all the time. <laughs> yep. Uh, that's great. Yes, sir. Uh, oh, we got uh, a shout saw, out. What's that? You saw the label that I bought, the brought with me the the zero bottle caps given, the one that looks like the untapped. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. got to be my favorite one right now. <laughs> Dude, uh, the ones that kill me are like the ones that like do it like like the entire can is everything. There's a I can't I don't know who it is. I can't remember off the top, but they had one that's called I think it's Parish. Had one called um. Uh, no slaw, all toast. But it was like the Raising Cane's logo and like their font and everything on there. I'm like, you guys got some cojones doing that shit, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, did you ever try the? Uh, a lot of homebrewers do it too, and sometimes you wonder because some of these homebrewers can make some really great labels. And it's like the the there was a little Debbie beer that had like the little Debbie logo on it, man, and it was a good beer too. And I was like, this guy, how is he getting away with this? But uh, right? I think uh, close to me is uh, 450 North, and they they toe the line all the time. They every every time they put out a label, it's it's sketch. I'm like, wow, how and why hasn't anybody sent you a cease and desist yet? So, and those guys sell a ton of product, and they those guys have freaking a half a dozen cans coming out every week, all sorts of different labels. I mean, yeah. It, Scooby Doo theft. I mean, every serial <laughs> yeah. character under the sun. Star Wars. I mean, everything. They just bite on yeah, it. And... Yeah, this last one was serial. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, I but man, to... I've always wondered that myself. Why like, some people just can get away with it, and other people can't for some reason. But. Yeah. So uh, before we I'm get drinking a meat, by the way. So. Uh, I was this is before we get too far North... into it. What are you drinking yeah. on? This is our newest traditional uh, coming out soon, getting the labels ready now. 
It's called uh, Earth Bounty Traditional. It's made with uh, my business partner's honey um, mm. and just beautiful. So, okay. yeah. We got I love dry, it. semi-sweet on that? Uh, let's, all let's sweet see. all the time. <laughs> <laughs> all sweet all the time. Is that a wildflower honey? Is that a single varietal? Wildflower. wildflower. Now, so, is that your guys' traditional there at Tree High? No, uh, I've done uh, eucalyptus blossom, and I've done another – a uh, wildflower that was made with uh, what seven or ten different honeys. It was. Uh, I think you tried it. My nickname for it was Scraps because it was all the scraps out of all the buckets. <laughs> so yeah, that one was fun. <laughs> I'm having a hard time remembering everything I tried. That was uh, those nights. There was uh, a lot there of was, stuff to try. <laughs> yeah, easily over a hundred meads tried, and then uh, throw in those beers, throw in everything else that we drank. Yeah, it was beautiful. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, dude, it was absolutely amazing. And um, that trip deck dope beer, that thing was amazing. <laughs> or the dank, yeah. dope, the dank. Yeah, the dank scheme. Yeah, if yeah, anybody that's up there weird. in the Midwest or anybody where they trip tech dis, uh, distributes you, pick up one of those danks. That thing was amazing. If they're still around. I don't know if you guys don't need to. Oh, yeah, bro. We, we kept those two seltzers in house only. We made another one since then uh, called. Um, Oh gosh, OG. <laughs> so, so it's, it's pretty good, and that that has a lot more like fruit character into it. So tangerine stuff like that, citrusy. So it was oh. good. I like it better than the blueberry one. Nice. Yeah, I, I definitely am digging seltzers a lot more than I was expecting to when they're done right. You know, I those Trulies and those White Claws are just god awful at times, but. <laughs> But, like, a lot of the craft seltzers are having a really cool – there's a place out here in Tempe called uh, Crush Craft Ciders, and they've got some – I'd probably say about two dozen flavors by now. Some of them are just, like, real slapping. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I I never knew I liked seltzers until I just started trying more and more, and I'm like, oh, man, I have to like these now. <laughs> it's, it's like when we were younger. It's like, do I really want to like Zima, but I'm going to drink it anyway. <laughs> Oh, definitely. Yeah, I was definitely what it was. Uh, Zima, and then there was the uh, the other one that was you know super clear. It was was it Seagrams or something like that? <laughs> or I don't yeah, know. Seagrams did have another clear one out there, and, to, yeah. Yeah, and then they, those guys pretty much ruled the world until like the Mike's Hards came out and the Twisted Teas and everything like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, tree hive you see the logo you got going on there in the background that's a cool little I, I love your logo it's 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 minimalistic but not like so minimalistic it doesn't have character to it, it it's very cool what would you would you come up with the logo what's up with the name all that jazz uh to be honest we had about 10 different names we were going through and um some someone came up with tree hive and our original logo idea was going to be like a tree and then we were going to make that tree the t and then come off of that and then have like, you know, a little honeycomb hanging down from there. And then um, we got with this guy and it made a logo, to be honest, it was completely different than this. And then someone's like, hey, what if we do this? And they just moved it over and added that honey dipper to the top. Because that, that, if you look, if you go like this, yeah, th and take away the bottom portion of that, it, it was in the very middle. It was tree and then that logo and then the middle and it looked like a cup. And it looked like a tree. And then we figured out, you know, that we could make it the whole tea and run it together. And it worked out really well. It only took about three months to get it all locked down. But we did it. <laughs> yeah, graphic design is a is a is a true art form for people who who get it, who can see those, you know, the use of negative space and shape and stuff like that. It's I, I envy those people a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Yeah, I, I struggle. <laughs> Same, brother. Same. <laughs> so you guys are in Illinois somewhere, right? Yep. Rancho, Illinois, right about 15 minutes north of uh, Champaign. Um, okay. Decent-sized town. Um, you know, not much really going on here. They built a $20,000 sports complex in this town last year. Um, that's just now getting rolling within this last year. So. Very nice. So hopefully that really brings in more foot traffic to your area. How far away is that from where you guys are actually located? Oh, like a mile. So oh. just a yeah, yeah, just it's in town. That's so. what. Um, 
so you guys have been open for a few months now, right? Not too long. Right? Started producing uh, first batch went in uh, just a little over a year ago into the tanks, and it was ready on uh, February first is when I first started selling meat. So we don't have a tap room yet, uh, still in the planning, but I, I am all over Champaign County here in Central Illinois and picking up accounts. You know, every couple of weeks I'll pick up someone new and spreading yeah. out the love of the mead. So it's been nice. Now the spot where you're brewing at, does that have um, like room for a tap house or is that going to be something that you have to get like off site? Oh, no, we have, we actually have enough space here. So oh, we good. actually do um, honey production here. We work on our bee boxes here, uh, storage upstairs, um, and then we have a whole area that's set up to be a tap room. And, and even some outdoor seating eventually, I think. And you said that your partner does beekeeping? Yeah. And so in there, bounty uh, right here. So this is, this is what's in my, that's a logo for it. That's what's in my, my glass right now. <laughs> nice. And is that something you guys do just for yourselves or does he sell that honey himself is, or sell, sell that honey commercially? Uh, they, uh, they sell it uh, here at the local farmer markets and stuff like that. So, and then friends and family that buy it. Nice. So and then I, I believe we use a bulk of it here. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm sure you guys are using, you know, I, I don't know how many boxes do you guys have or does he have? I don't know. Well, it's, it's a he and a she, but a oh. hundred, Got up to 100 hives this year. Holy yeah. shit. Yeah. yeah. That's legit. So, just a few. <laughs> yeah, just a few, man. And those are all there on property? No, they're off-site. So they're all around Champaign County here in Central oh. Illinois. So. God, I was going to say, man, I was like, you guys got a slice of land there, my man. Holy cow. Oh, no, no, we, we use everyone else's land. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's, that's the way to do it. Use their pulling yeah. off their plants. You guys pulled any like single varieties yet, or is it all pretty much just? No, it, yeah, we mix it. It's all a mixed bag of wildflower. But there, we have a a couple places that one place that's going to have buckwheat. I think if we can get it done and pulled right one at the right time, and then a, a huge sunflower location, which is what I'm really waiting on. <laughs> so. Yes. It, it, we could have had some this year, but it wasn't going to be enough to do anything with. So hopefully next year we'll be able to pull a varietal. Hey, yeah, that'd be, that'd be freaking radical. Now is the goal to, or are you currently already operating on your guys' own honey base? Um, it's, this is the first batch. Um, other than that, we do, we add some of the honey to every batch just to kind of blend our own, you know, so unless it's a varietal honey, like I have a eucalyptus blossom honey, traditional um, that I didn't use it in. And then another batch was the Easy on the Bees, which, you know, I used four other honeys instead of that one, you know. But other than that, like our base meat, so I do, a, I've done blueberry, I've done red currant, mango, cherry vanilla. That was all made with um, a little bit of that honey as well. Gotcha. So. Now that one with the, all the bees. Oh, yeah. Easy on the bees. <laughs> easy on the bees. That one we got Blueberry, blackberry, black raspberry, black sage honey, <laughs> buckwheat honey. Now, I right. didn't know it until after the fact, but I ended up judging that one at Mazer Cup just because I remembered all the bees in it and everything like that. <laughs> that thing was uh, a wild trip, my brother. Yeah, uh, it took silver at um, National Honey Board. So, that, yeah. I, tr I, I tried to push it forward. I don't know where it got stalled out at at Mazer Cup, but, man, that thing was wild brother what, yeah. what made you what made you want to do something with with was it just the all the bees and the alliteration or was it just yeah it was uh i was on a trip to detroit and i'm sitting there and this guy's with me and we're just talking and then all of a sudden i came up with this meat as we're just driving around i'm like you know I, everybody's doing you know all these meats and they were all focused on black you know and everything like that and i'm like i i'm gonna do something with just bees and it was so i just whatever bee i could find so i was i've been thinking about a new iteration and i'm gonna remove the basil and black pepper corn and leave it like it is without that because it the, the meat completely was different before i put that basil and black pepper in the, uh pep, ah, black peppercorn in there the uh the black uh berry blossom honey really shines through that meat so i'm really looking forward to using that honey again with that mead 
and then uh, I want to put it into a barrel again, and then uh, I want to mess with uh, the birch, so birch wood. So yellow birch puts off a cherry flavor, so I want to I want to add that extra bee, remove some bees, add some bees, you know. It's just going to be this yearly thing of messing with that meat, I think. So that's, I think that's legit. That's one of the coolest ideas I've heard in a while as far as that goes. It, you yeah. know, it's unique. Everybody's got these, like, lines that they do or, you know, different, you know, groupings or whatever. I think that's a really cool seasonal or an annual one to do. So we got somebody here in the comments, Obsidian Coffee. Oh, yeah. Uh, he's, I'm going to meet up with him Thursday. We're doing a mead a latte. Uh I have a mead going right now. It's about 6.25%. Um, it was just my base session mead. And then I added vanilla and I just added lactose. I added some macadamia nut honey and it's just waiting on his coffee. So, Which yeah. he said he's roasting right now, actually. Outstanding. <laughs> Looking forward to that. So, yeah, yes. and uh, everything's ready for that. Labels approved. So just as soon as I get that coffee... That needs should be ready in about two weeks, I think. So, legit. Yeah. Um, and he's got an emoji like a black heart and the nice guy. Is that like a hint of what the name is going to be? Or oh no, it's called Mida Latte. <laughs> oh, that, oh, you were saying you were having a Mida Latte meeting. Like no, so that's the name is going to be Mida Latte. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I'm on board with that. That you know the coffee meads for me are are pretty hit or miss at times. Some of them have been have been um, pretty good and had like a really solid coffee flavor and other ones. I had one that tasted like if you went to like a truck stop diner about 3 a.m. on a Friday night or a Friday morning and like drank the coffee that was spilled out of an ashtray. <laughs> I mean, it yeah. was not good at all in the slightest, but um, yeah. you the, the biggest thing on coffee meats for me is the green pepper flavor. If you know, if for some reason, that's what I get on most of them. So I've only ever had a few that I really, truly enjoy. So, yeah, that's I would definitely be um, keeping an eye on your vino shipper here in the next, in the coming weeks. If oh yeah. Anybody out there is yet to have tree hive stuff. They are on vino shipper. So if you're in one of those fortunate states and are not in Illinois, go hit them up on that and get some of these bottles because TK and drinks approved some good stuff there. <laughs> nice um, thing. Yeah. Uh, so what made you get into making me? What was the first time you ever had it? Uh, the first time I ever had it, I had a friend that said, hey, uh, if you see any meat out in the world, you know, can you start picking it up? So I'm like, okay. So I think the first meat I bought was a Bell's Brewery had a meat, you know, in their gift shop. So, mm -hmm. uh, so I picked that up and it was okay. But then I uh, started going up to Chicago, found uh I think Crafted was up there, then started finding Moonlight. Um, and then, uh, let's see, there was one more. Um, oh, and then just random Polish meats that I would find on the shelves up there at the time. And so, like Jadwiga, and that, as soon as I had that one, that one's the one that did it for me. Game so, over. <laughs> yeah, and then and then Bean Nectar came down, and so Zombie Killer was on draft down here, everywhere. So, it still is. So, I think Citro Illinois sells a ton of Zombie Killer. So, it's... It's crazy. It, but, we got it on the um, shelf here in bottles and stuff. I've I had it one time about a couple years ago. It's like it's the um, is it the blueberry lemonade flavored one? Which one? Um, is there a, the zombie killer? Have, I think no zombie killer is their apple cider or apple yeah. cider basically. Okay, um, it's cherry and cherries and apples. Cherries and apples. Maybe I didn't have the zombie killer. They had something from Bee Nectar down here, about three or four of them. They had wild labels on them, like these crazy looking like monsters and skeleton zombies and shit on them. But um yeah, those guys are have some seriously wide distribution. I would say they're they're probably one of the um farther reaching ones, you know, in the top five, I would say. Oh, definitely. And uh so that you you have the Polish meads, you try the meads, you help your buddy out, and then well, you start home brewing. Uh, yeah. Soon after that, I found so I found Bean Nectar, and I started going to releases. Um, started home brewing. Um, my first two meads, uh, I made a cherry mead and I made a traditional, and I waited six months, you know, and I'm waiting on them, and I'm like, okay, I have time to bottle. It was right around Christmas time, and 
um, I shared it with my friend and he's like, man, this is really sweet. And I'm like, man, you're right. It's like syrup. And I'm like, something's wrong here. Uh, this was before I had any hydrometers, didn't know what I was doing. Yeah, they didn't for me. <laughs> so I made, you know, I made some must. It was really freaking good must. But <laughs> so after that, I'm like, okay, let's get all the necessary equipment, start doing it again. And then I made rocket fuel for a few years and then uh, figured that out. And now, yeah, it took, you know, five, six years to finally get to where I wanted it to be. Um, yeah. yeah. And at the time I had another guy, I was making mead. We were both making it back and forth together. We'd make some batches together and then uh, started uh, something, uh, another company. We're trying to start something. And then we went our separate ways and, uh, but we ended up winning a, a gold medal at Mazer Cup uh, for a, a black currant mead with uh, Tupelo and M Meadow Foam. Uh, Ooh, wow. That was amazing. And uh, then uh, I think we, we won another award as well for a, a, a hopped mead. And then, uh, but anyway, we went our separate ways, and now I'm just out here doing what I can now. Doing your thing. Uh, yeah. My buddy Tony's asking, he says, if you don't mind, how do you prepare the coffee for your mead, for your coffee latte mead? So I've done one other coffee mead, and I seriously, we get it roasted, and we just stick it in the fermenter. So so just right there in the secondary, and basically, basically, I'm going to dry hop the mead with the coffee beans. You're going to so, bag them they'll up. Be ground up. Them. Yeah, they'll be ground up. So, oh. yeah. Yep. And then just just let it steep and taste and steep and taste till you get to where you need it to go. Yes. Man. So yeah. How many Try pounds of coffee are you using? Well, this one I'm gonna do uh we're gonna try five pounds. So it's fifty five gallon batch. Fifty five, sixty gallon batch, so I'm gonna try five pounds in there and hopefully it doesn't take you know, just a few hours to get done or whatever. If it takes up 24 to 48 hours, it is what it is. So right. Uh, I'm looking forward to that one. That one's, that one's been on my radar for a while. I'm like, I want to make a meat -a latte, <laughs> so a latte mead. And then I came up with this meat -a latte thing. So what's the label for that one going to look like? I, I wish I had it with me and I could show you because I don't have it printed off yet, but basically it's here's, here's the, Tree Eye logo right here in the label. So yeah, what yeah. I did is put meat a latte right here, and then I have uh, like one, two, three coffee cups going on there. So nice. yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> so I like it, but that's what, like I said, I'm not a graphics designer. This is just me trying to you know figure stuff out and get some things. You know, I would use Canva, so that's like the easiest one to use for me. So. Hey, I say do what do what you do, man. You have a very um, like you, said, you have a uniform look to your bottles and a nice clean logo. I say you're doing doing it very well for for somebody who's not a graphic designer. Yeah, here I'll, I'll show you what a kind of similar with the logos I'm dealing with. Let me grab one. Yeah, man, this is uh, getting to see behind the scenes that the label making and the graphic design is not something that I'm always privy to. So I'm definitely digging that. So, so, so this is where I'm, so I've got this, the blood trail and this is kind of the stuff I'm going to do, you know, so yeah. I've got that, I've got the blood splatter. So this was a cherry vanilla mead. And then, you know, the easy on the bees label was, I just seriously just grabbed a whole bunch of different bees and started sticking them on there. <laughs> so I think my, my five-year-old could probably do a better label than me, but you know, <laughs> I'm not going to give her the rings. <laughs> But again, I like I like the fact that you have it set up the way you do. Like I said, you have this uniform label. You can alter it when you when you need to. You can leave it be as a, for a traditional. It 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 works. It, it it's a lot cooler than having to go out and um, it's certainly a lot simpler than having to go out and and you know source a whole new label every single time. And yeah, like like he said, like Tony says here, says I like the simplicity of it. it makes it cheaper to print out and stuff too. <laughs> Yeah, and then you're not paying someone three hundred dollars to make one label, you know, when you're probably only going to make three hundred dollars, you know, off of some, some of those bottles anyway. Dude, so that's, that's the real talk right there. That's something I'm surprised I don't I haven't heard more from uh, when I ask commercial mead makers 
you know, like what's one of the, you know, kind of unforeseen difficulties is cost of labels and dealing with the TTB as far as like getting um, labels approved and everything like that, because you have to have your label design. And like you said, if you're going out to a graphic designer, now you got to, if anything comes back, now you got to go back again, have them revise it again. If, if the TTB doesn't approve, ah, man, that sounds like a whole headache and a half. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I definitely like we're small batch. I mean, the most <laughs> bottles we've got out of one batch is 500. So, you know, if I'm only, I'm printing 500 labels at a time. So it's, for me to pay that much money off to somebody just to design the label, that's not going to, you're not going to make money that way. So. Right. And in the, in the, back the of, in the world of label printing, I'm sure 500 is like a nothing order. That's like going to be the expensive side. Oh, well, well, that's the thing is, so I've ordered labels twice. So what you got to do is like right now, what I'm working on is I'm working on like five or six different labels and then I'm going to add a couple more to that. So you want to have it like at 3,000 to 4,000 labels, and that price just drops. It, if I just got 500 labels, it would be like 50 cents or 41 cents for one label. And right. if I get, you know, 4,000, it can get it down to 13. So Right. You end up paying just slightly more for the two or 3,000 labels than you did for the 500. Oh, yeah. It's fucking ridiculous. Exactly. Yeah, so I'm paying $300 instead of 150 or something for one label. And I'm like, you know, $100 more and I'm getting 5000 <laughs> So, Yeah, that again, that's that's something that I I can only imagine is a, one of those backroom headaches that you have to deal with. It's like, ah, stupid fucking labels. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, man. So you're in a – you're in a – fairly saturated area with, with meteries, you know, being in the, in the whole sugar belt area and stuff, you know, you got four fires in the area, Mannix over there, Unpossible, um, second cities up there. You're in some really good company. Do you, are you, are you afraid or do you feel like you're going to fit right in with these cats? Uh, it, I mean, I I'm trying to fit in. That's it. Uh, luckily I'm, I'm friends with every single one of those people you mentioned. <laughs> um, and then a few more we've got, I mean, bone flowers up here. Pips is up here obscurity meetings here um another meadery that gets missed is called wildwood cellars they're they're they live 20 minutes north of me or they're they're meteries 20 minutes north of me but they they also do a lot of wine so they're and they're in two different states but they make um an elderberry mead that's really good an elderberry and an elderberry blackberry um Ooh. what's funny is I don't talk to them, but I talk to Brian almost every day. <laughs> so, I mean, I just talked to Brian probably five different times today. And so, he's, it's impossible. He's, yeah, yeah, said Brian over at Impossible. And this guy that's yeah. a block, two blocks up the road, you know, you don't even interact with him at all. Yeah. Did you try to? Did you, I mean, you already know a oh, lot of kids in the industry, but did you ever try to just... Oh yeah, I've I've walked in a couple times. One time when they were making mead, I go and I sample stuff and just talk to them and you know just see how things are going. Uh, uh, at the beginning, I tried you know tried asking questions to people, but some people are more apt to you know give you some information, and other people want to keep it close, you know. So that's that's another thing that makes it difficult. There's there's all sorts of little bitty hoops you have to jump through. Luckily, I uh, I know a good lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're, we're bottling me tonight he's over here <laughs> so. that's awesome that you got your lawyer bottling me for you uh, yeah he's a good dude <laughs> that's my business partner's husband so <laughs> clear very cool my man that hey yeah. teamwork many hands make light labor right yeah definitely uh, so but, you yeah. So you opened back up in February in the middle of the pandemic. I mean, you didn't start just at the beginning. I mean, you started like in the in the middle of all the bullshit and everything. What's your but you're only doing distribution. So uh, how is that? How's that working out for you guys? I mean, you're you still got the rent on the full place that you're doing, but you're not getting to reap the benefits of the full sales price. They they own the building. So we're good there. Oh, um, yeah. so uh, <laughs> it we're I mean, to be honest, at first, I was like, man, we need a tap room ASAP, but it's kind of really worked out. I've got my feet wet. I, I'm learning what people like, what people don't. Uh, the good thing is, like I said, I'm small batch, so I'm watching these meads, you know, at 500 bottles. You know, the first couple batches went really fast, and then 
then it just went slow and then picked back up. So it's, and it's just going up and down to be honest. But I said, I'm picking up more accounts, more and more people are drinking the mead. Um, I mean, I don't, I, I can't share a mead without someone telling me that they love it. So, you know, which is great. So, yeah. Uh, uh, hey, here, I mean, share a couple with me and I love it. Uh, like I said, all those places that I named earlier, I, I can see your bottle sitting along the side of the shelf uh, next to manic stuff. No problem. Next to impossible stuff. No problem. It, it, yeah. And, yeah. It's, and, it, it's great being there with the peers. So some of these guys I've been following for a long time. So it's kind of great. And I think, you know, I think a lot of people might be kind of intimidated by that, but for me, it's like a whole, excuse me, uh, like a steel sharpened steel type of thing. You know what I mean? You're, if you're around a bunch of mediocrity, not mediocrity in California, the meadery, which I really mean to try based off of a cool ass name alone. <laughs> but, uh, uh, um, you know, if you, if there's just a bunch of mediocre meter makers around you, you know, it, it's the whole big fish in a small pond versus small fish in a big pond type of thing. And I'd much rather be surrounded with a bunch of really kick-ass people because they're going to help me be a better person or help me be a oh, better yeah. meat maker anyway. Definitely. So, yeah. So there's a lot of good meats to, you know, a lot of good meat makers to strive to be or be like. And so it's, uh, I think the other thing is different meat makers. We all make different meats. I mean, yeah. there's, there's like four of us right now that have a eucalyptus blossom traditional and yeah. they've all been tasted and judged differently. And it's, it's great. So, and I love it because everybody's got their own style. So I am not like super sugar belty. I'm still sweet, but I haven't made that syrupy sweet, like, you know, going to have to go get a shot kind of mead yet. <laughs> so, right. Um, one where it comes with diabetes attached to it. Yeah, basically. <laughs> uh, um, what is your favorite style to make? You know, that you got, you're surrounded by a ton of stuff up there. What's going on, Wild West Mead? Welcome to the room. <laughs> hey, I uh, I am a super fan of traditionals. I I think they're probably the most overlooked style, except for, unless you're a mead maker. Like I think most mead makers love making traditionals, but you know, getting that public to really enjoy it. Um, fortunately, I made a couple that have the you know the one that has been out there, Sunny Bear that. Eucalyptus blossom has went over really well, and I, I mean, I'm just trying to make liquid honey at that point. You know, get some alcohol in there and just uh, some alcoholic honey right. water. Carry, you know, to do this. <laughs> carry that honey flavor through and just let it be fermented. Yeah, I. Yeah. Um, what makes you pick the flavor profiles that you guys do there? Is it just that you get a wild hair and say, I like with the coffee one? Is this is something you wanted to do, or do you have like a flavor wheel you spin or no it, it, it's it comes down to what i see and what i taste and i might try something i might try a dessert i might try a beverage and every, sometimes it just clicks in my head i'm like i want to do that um but you know what's funny is i have tons of meat at my house from all different commercial meat makers i I don't even know how many bottles I have anymore at this point. A lot. <laughs> and uh, I was, I've joined every club. What you would think is I would taste some of these meads and be like, oh, I want to emulate, emulate that. But that's not what I do. It's, it's, it all comes to me from just my daily life. And then, or I see something and I'm like, hey, you know, I want to try this. So there's, a, there's another tree hive down there. <laughs> yeah, I was just seeing that. I was like, hey, what's going on? Another different tree nice. hive. <laughs> Uh, Bremen Horn makes some amazing traditionals. Yeah, Bremen Horn does. Yeah. They have a Zambezi honey. It's probably one of my favorites that I've had. That thing is amazing. Oh yeah, he makes John makes great meat. So yeah, that like I said, every time it gets brought up, I feel blessed to be able to distribute their stuff because for him to trust me enough with his his flavor profiles and his wild, just wild and crazy stuff that he does, uh, it yeah. is freaking kick ass. Uh, I actually had a traditional the other day from uh, Honey Pot Meter. I don't know if you've ever had any of their stuff. I'm assuming so. So they did a oh. series based off of a uh, Final Fantasy VII video game, the whole weapon series. Oh, every, yeah. Every different no. character. And this is the only one, from what I understand, that was a traditional. And it was made with El Salvadorian wildflower honey. Nice. Going back, we were That's talking about great. earlier... 
um, about the untapped and stuff like that. That thing got blasted on untapped. Had like a two seven five, two five zero, something like that. That is one of the most unique meads I've ever tasted. Like those those crazy jungle honeys and bush honeys and stuff. Those things are so unique and so crazy. And for people to sit there, it's like ah, that tastes like garbage. It tastes like you know, whatever they describe it as. It's like, you don't even understand, like, you can't recreate this flavor profile. You couldn't add spices and herbs and create this. is all from the honey, baby. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. I, I, so to your point, uh, I, I agree. Mead makers seem to be the cats that really um, gravitate towards traditionals. But I'm trying to, I want to do my best to get people into traditionals because there's so many unique flavors that, again, come from just the honey and everything like that. Yeah, definitely. A lot so of the a lot oh, to from, be slightly sour or tart. What, what are we talking about? Honey? Oh, the Central oh, American honey. Nice. Oh, yeah. See, there's another one like the sour wood honeys and stuff like that. Now that I don't know if it's a fault or not. I mean, obviously, I don't think it could be a fault if it comes from the honey naturally. Like buckwheat honey can be kind of funky and sour and stuff. But um, yeah, I, I picked up the uh, oh gosh, the honey from Brian. And I can't even remember. I can't even pronounce the name. But we all tasted it at Mazer. So I picked oh, yeah. up one of those. Uh, I think that's actually uh, Tanzanian honey, right? Something like that. But I, I'm really looking forward to using that honey in a traditional as well. So I think it would go best in a bracket. That's for that honey. But I want, you know, I want to try it as a trad first and see what it does. So Yeah, it was super dark and molasses-y flavored. And it was, yeah, malty. Yeah. And, yeah. That was when he was talking about how he had to like fly it out of uh, whatever country it was in in Africa because they were getting robbed at the ports and whatnot. I mean, that was a crazy yeah. ass story. <laughs> I know, but dude, that yeah. So yeah, to that, I, I I'll be on the lookout for that as well. I'll keep my yeah, eyes out for the honey flavor. I can't pronounce. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I'm gonna do a eucalyptus blossom again. I'm gonna do that traditional, um, and I've got you know a clover honey. I want to do a tra trad with that I got from Wayne while we were out there and then other than that i'm gonna start remaking uh the other meats that i got so um but looking forward to the trads so nice. i want to always have a trad on at least one so maybe two hey that's, i'm on board with that for sure <laughs> uh is there any ingredients that you don't like to work with that are you like you've worked with them in the past or you've just heard horror stories like i've heard that gooseberries are just an absolute monster to work with <laughs> I'll try anything, but I don't want to deal with bananas. I don't want to deal with peanut butter. I think there's all sorts of meaderies out there that deal with both of those, and they're not in my – they're not even on my radar. So someone has mentioned the peanut butter one. I'm like, no, I'm good. I don't need that. And I, I have multiple bottles of peanut butter meat at my house. I don't need to make my own, uh, so I'm good. <laughs> yeah, so. I, I've heard nothing but horror stories about – peanut butter and filters and cleaning up bananas and stuff like that. It, it does not sound like anything I want to take any part of. Yeah. No, I'm going to pass on those. But other than that, I will try. I'll, I'll do whatever I can. So just messing with spices, man. I'm making a wine right now uh, for, you know, it's called festivities. Um, and it's just, you know, a spiced wine basically. So looking forward to that one, but that's, you know, that has mace, cardamom, you know, even a little extra nutmeg in there, the cinnamon and everything else, star anise and I and cloves. And I, I just like star anise and I just like cloves, but I'll put them in the meat. So, you know, just because they're going to give that flavor that I'm looking for. Right. So, One of those things where the sum is greater than all the parts type of thing. Yeah, definitely. So I worked with a spice guy on that. He said you get more flavor from mace than you do nutmeg. Uh, but that so. same similar type of flavor, though. Yeah. Wow. So, I'm, not, I so, I'm, I'm like, okay. Yeah. I'm like, you're the spice guy. I'm going to, I'm going to listen to you. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Um, so you got the bananas. You said no, you said no to uh, peanut butter or anything. What about like, you're going to do ciders or like we were talking about seltzers or anything like that, or uh, even like yeah. a kombucha? Probably won't do kombucha or the seltzer. Maybe someday a honey seltzer would be good. But um, I, I wanted to do cider this year, just couldn't get hooked up with the right cider guy um, mm. just at the right time. So next year, definitely cider is on my list. 
um, really want to have some cider. I mean, I have on the back of my shirt, it says mead cider wine. So, you know, missing a key component if I don't make any cider, but, uh, it's the other thing with that is <laughs> I, I'm right now, my biggest, you know, fermenter is like 150 gallons. So to make a cider that, you know, you can charge enough for, that's going to be the issue, I think, with our small system. So it's just too small to, to have the right price, you know. So gotcha. I had no idea. It, cider just takes a lot of, you got to get a lot of volume to get your money back on that, huh? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, well, not, it's not just to get your money back. It's so you can, like, you can't, I can't make a cider and then charge $10 for a bottle of it, you know. So it's not, nobody's going to pay $10 for a bottle of cider if it's just a regular cider. So okay. you're yeah. going to want more of like a $10 for a four pack or a six pack kind of price. And then the, for me, 150 gallons of that's just going to be too difficult, I think. I so. got you. That's interesting. I'm, I wonder how some of those cider places out there that that's focused solely or almost solely on the cider, like, um, Who's that cat out there that has like the punk label for all his apples? Looks like he's out jack stomping somebody. Um, is that twisted? <laughs> oh gosh, I don't remember. <laughs> Raging, Raging Cider in oh, um, okay. in California. They have man about two dozen different ciders, and they're about that up in that price range. So I'm curious how they do it, but they have like all sorts of single variety ciders and everything. And yeah, not, apples not being a California thing, I was always curious how they did that, but. So honey, yeah, some cider. That's <laughs> yeah, have you have you made a sizer yet? Or are you going to do any climates? Or I haven't done a sizer commercially. I've done it, you know, homebrew stuff. I've done climates. My first meet actually was a climate. Uh, was a Concord grape um, climate. So I really liked it. I'm at actually on batch two right now. It's sitting in that container right uh, there. Let's <laughs> <laughs> nice. say something good. Um, it's uh it's almost ready. So, but that one's uh, I call that grape happens because the first time I did it, I went and bought 58 gallon, you know, container of grape juice from this company, strapped it in the back of the truck. I get all the way back to Rantoul, which is like an hour and 15 minutes away coming off the interstate. And all of a sudden that thing just starts wobbling. And then oh, without me knowing it just boom crashes right into the window, cracks my back of my window. And I'm like, Oh, great. I just keep driving. I pull in here and make another turn the other way. And it rolls to the other side and breaks both sides of my back window. And uh, so, and then uh, it was the first batch. So I had some learning mistakes on equipment and I had, you know, meat all over the wall and yeah. So great happens. Great yeah, happens. Great. <laughs> But was the final product up to your exacting standards? Uh, yeah, it was. Um, the first one was a little bit thinner than I wanted it to be. Um, I think there's just more grape juice. And since it was just straight grape juice and then honey, the I didn't have to add as much honey. So it was yeah. it was towing that line of fermentable to be not a mead, more of a wine with honey. But uh, it, it was there. Um, so this batch is a little bit different. It's a lot thicker. It's you know, more honey. Uh, and so it's, 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 it's right there where I want it to be. So pretty stoked with it before. Right on. Um, do you have any other collabs going on besides the coffee one? Uh, no, that's, uh, that's the one right now. Uh, I mean, I'm using the spices from a guy, uh, you know, about an hour away called Bloomington spice works, you know, so yeah. I was going to, you know, I'll give him a shout out, not on the label or anything, but I'm going to give him a shout out whenever it comes out and stuff like that. But, uh, have you yeah, nothing yet. I have some people I want to make some meat with, but, okay. uh, yeah. So any hopefully other, someday. <laughs> any of those other mead makers in the area? Uh, yeah. I mean, um, I've talked to him, you know, we haven't set anything up yet, but someday. So it's definitely time. not out of the question. Yeah, definitely not. I would love to make some meat with somebody else. It's more about that camaraderie, just mm -hmm. hanging out with other meat makers and, you know, talking meat all day, drinking meat, probably drinking beer more than meat because, you know, we drink a lot of meat. But, uh, you know, yeah, some really great people away uh, around. So, yeah. Um, so you got, uh, you, you took some medals at Mazer Cup, right? Or you took I did not I did not get Mazer Cup. So you were talking about, you know, 
logos looking the same. Um, apparently, people confuse me with Honey Pot because he has, you know, this, yeah. but he has the H and it's sideways. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, the, the Honey Dipper is sideways, but my Honey Dipper is, you know, got drips on it. Mine's, you know, it's a, yeah, and it's a T. It's not the middle of an H. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, so it was quite embarrassing to have people saying, hey, Corey, congratulations on your Mazer Cup gold and all these medals. And I'm like, dude, that was not me. <laughs> I'm like, as much as I wanted it to be me, I, it was not me. <laughs> so, but I did, uh, so the recent one, National Honey Board, I got a gold for my blueberry mead, yes. a silver for easy on the bees. I got a bronze for my mango. And yes. then you go to um, the competition that uh, just called, shouted me out yesterday was the Indiana Brewers Cup. And I got best overall, uh, you know, for um, my Sunny Bear, which was the Eucalyptus Blossom Traditional, and I got a, a third place for my Red Current Mead over there. So, so I've had five meads medal this year, and I will take that. So I've only entered um, seven meads, so five out of seven is not bad. No. Um, yeah, uh, it's, and I, I think in even that little article spiel thing, I, I even put, I, I love competing, but... To be honest, it's it's more about just sharing that product and just seeing people's faces when they're like, hey, this is amazing, like, or this is really good, and people, you know, just turning people into meat drinkers. So that's the end goal is just getting meat out there. And um, actually, one of the things I talked about to Brian today, I'm like, hey, we need something about Central Illinois. I mean, they know about meat, but it's still only a certain amount of people. I'm like, we need to spread that love out there, and let's tr try to figure out how we can – you know, get meat out there. So. Yeah, get people knocking your doors down even more than they are, so to speak. Yeah. Um, That'd be cool. Do you do you do any meat and food pairings? Not necessarily there at your at your not not tap room, but um, do you guys have that in the in the plans? Like, is that something that you do? Is design your meads with you know to be potentially paired with anything in in particular? Or I really haven't had to yet. I mean, eventually that would be great to do. Uh, we've had talks about doing it, putting stuff like that on our label. You know, other meat makers, you know, they do that, other meaderies. And I think that's cool and all, but I, at this point, like, I, it's just not on, you know, not in, on my list of things to get done. <laughs> not on the menu, so to speak. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> sorry, I'm full of cheesy, terrible puns. <laughs> uh, um, sorry. Is there any meteries that you haven't been to or haven't tried that you're just really dying to get out there and, and scope them out? Oh, I'm sure there is, but trying to think of their names without knowing who they are, you know, it's kind of those kind of things. Um, okay. I've, I'm fortunate that I've tried most of the ones that I know about that I want to try. So I've had my pips. I've, you know, I, I mean, I've been a member of Garages from the get-go, um, four fires, shrams, bean nectar, coonan. I mean, if, to be honest, you give me some old school coonan bottles, I'll take those all day long. Frank may make some great mead over there. Um, I mean, Detroit's just where it's at. I'm actually going to go on a trip uh, on the 17th out there. So to hang out at bean nectar and just do a bottle share with some of these guys. I mean, there's a lot of home brewers out there that are making great meat that I want to try. So, I mean, that's, yeah. that's what's crazy is the homebrew. Sometimes there's a lot of really good meat out there from home brewers. So. Yeah, that's, that's where I, I, I and I think this, the same thing stands true with brewing and, and the same thing with like food and stuff. Like you can go to these like kick-ass meateries or breweries and restaurants and have this like world-class level product, but you know, out there, there's like for food, you know, there's some grandma out there making something that blows that away. There's some home brewer out there who just does it as a hobby. Who's, you know, if we were, if you're, he was ever to like bottle it up and sit off the competition would take gold across the board. You know, it's just the unknown unknowns are, are what I, you know, strive for, strive to look for as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, do you, do you have, let's see here. Oh, get lost on my sheet. <laughs> Um, is there anybody that influences you that's in the, in the mead world? Oh, let's see. I mean, influence. I mean, there's every now and then you just, you know, you want to strive to make a better mead. I think, um, I think right now, I mean, I think Tony at Manic, you know, Tony and Keith are doing some amazing things at Manic right now. 
So, I mean, they're, you know, pushing the limits on things. Uh, Christopher Clark over at Four Fires, he does the same thing. I mean, and then you just have Ken Tram and, you know, Shrams in general that just makes solid meat all the time. Uh, Eat Bean Nectar does the same thing. I mean, there's just, there's, I think all of them, you know, they're all, there's great meat makers. Standard, um, you know, they're up here too in, you know, North Chicago and, uh, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. there's just so many great needs out there. So that's, that's and great needs. And so, everybody you named is in your area too. And there's a you know you can probably right. name two dozen more that are you know around the country. But so yeah, you're. I, I yeah. definitely get what you're saying there. Yeah. I mean, right, take, then you go to city and coffee. You got to get going. So glad I saw this pop up on IG. Appreciate being part of it. Yes. Thank you so much for uh, City and Coffee for making some kick-ass roast for our friends here at Tree Hive. That is yeah. definitely looking forward to that. Yeah, see you Thursday. <laughs> it's great. Um, yeah, I mean, and then, you know, look at some of these homebrewers right now that are out there. Alan Martin, you know, doing great things. Amy Olson, she makes great mead. Um, Jeremy Clossing, I mean, he's another homebrewer. That's He's another Chicago guy making fantastic mead. And then um, – you know, you got Carvin Wilson, you got all those guys in your area. There's a, I mean, it's just amazing. There's so many great mead makers out there right now. So, so it's a great time. Yeah. Definitely. Well, we are definitely running up on uh, the one hour mark here, my man. You got a little bit more um, time? Or? No, I'm good, man. Thank you. I can finish up bottling and, you know, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, working those two jobs. <laughs> right. I've got to sell tomorrow. <laughs> Mm. right on well i will let you go if that's the case sounds good man i appreciate you having me on no look problem. forward to talking to you again yes sir right. i will, uh, hope to run into you again everybody go give tree have a follow on here on instagram over on facebook search them out wherever they wherever they're at look for their meads if you're in central illinois and have a good Thank evening you. tonight brother see ya there we go well that was awesome. I always love getting to talk to these cats. Um, like I said, so Corey, hey, have a good night there, Tony. Uh, so like I said, Corey's over there, Central Illinois, Tree Hive Meadery. These guys are, uh, I had some of their stuff at Mazer Cup. It is really delicious stuff. I, not as, like you said, not nearly as sweet as some of those Sugar Belt cats, but definitely um, equal quality. So that easy on the bees was a very unique thing. So if you got a chance to scoop up one of those uh, first round bottles before he's, he changes that next year to whatever he's going to do, I highly suggest picking that up. So it's another one in the books for TK and drinks. What's the story? Treehouse mead. Y'all have a good day. Good night. Good evening. Appreciate y'all being here. Hit me up on Instagram. Give me a like if you're not already on here following over on the Facebook. And please, if you can, subscribe. Get that notify bell over on the YouTube channel. We'll get that going. As soon as I get enough followers over there, we're going to be doing the lives on there because that is my main platform. So to everybody that's here, have a good day, good night, good evening. Peace.